secondary is on there. Next, the throttle position sensors. This is the throttle that it's sensed here, which is that one. And we there. The computers are in, the ECUs, the electronic control units, they're two computers in this box which constantly interrogate each other. Now this pack will sit on the underside of the seat when it's in place, it will be taking the crate away, of course. Also in here now, just suspended temporarily for testing purposes, are the ignition packs. They're all wired up and ready to go. There's a few more connections I need to do, but first, before I can test it all, I need to put on the lights. Take me to your leader, take me to your leader, take me to your leader. Anti-collision lights first, the one at the back is red, it just pops in here, there's two anti-collision lights, you don't have to have anti-collision lights but I think it's completely stupid to go flying any aircraft and not have as much visibility as possible. There's a white anti-collision light that will just dangle on the front for testing purposes because you can't actually fix them all until the body's on and there's a control unit for the anti-collision lights which is back there which you can set for different flash patterns and the one that I've set up for this is to have three flashes of this one at the back and then three flashes of the one at the front which is called a Comet flash. So that's on there. Just plug that up. Finally the nav lights, the red one on the port side over there and then the green one on the starboard side here. Right, last thing is the battery. It's a standard 12 volt wet battery, but it's an aviation battery rather than a car battery, obviously. Just got two positive connections down this side. So that's on there like that. And then this side are the earth connections. It's a bit worrying this. Nothing happened, no lights on. <laughs> that's good. Right, let me just slot that in. I've already put on the overhead switch panel that's dangling off the airframe up there. That will fit into the top of the cockpit on the aircraft when the body works on. Sorted. Right, now it's time for the big test. Am yeah. I going to do it or are you going to do it, Pete? No, I don't know. You do it. Should I have a cup of tea first? Yeah. I think? Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll come back and do it later, just in case it doesn't work. <laughs> Right, had a cup of tea. Pete, do you think we should have another one? No, get on with it. We start with Fadec 1. Woo! Fadec 2. Second green light. Superb. Now, instrument panel. Ooh, look at that! Red lights everywhere. GPS. There we go. Fantastic. Right. Lights. Nav lights first. Yes! It's like Christmas! Yes, and it's working at the back too. Superb. Next, strobes. There we go. Now, if you are sensitive to flashing lights, or you think you might be, look away now. Three, three, comet, superb. It's all working. Switch those off. You can look again now. Right, so they worked. Landing light. So cool! Now, comms. So that's the comms master switch and the transponder master switch. And then I'll switch it on down here. Right. Is it working? Yes, do you want to listen to it? Here you go. Exciting or what, eh? The next job is to start putting some bodywork on. Yes, we're going to be fixing these panels on. That's a little skylight window for the cockpit, I am sure it is. And this panel's another one, the same. Lots of panels, lots of drilling, lots of clicos. He was the famous Frenchman who used to go sub -aquaring. Jacques Clicot. <laughs> the first bit of body work to go on is this, which is the tub, which is like the kind of undercarriage, if you like, um, of the main body shell, which will slide in because we've taken off the front landing gear to be able to get this on. I've also taken off all the electrics that I put on earlier temporarily like the overhead switch panel and the ignition packs and so on so they're not in our way. Now just watch the wiring down here mate. 
Are you all side? Yeah. Right. There's a cut out, Pete. Yeah. At the back there that will go over the rear landing gear. Okay. Oh, ow. Yeah, that's fine, look. We need to support the front end with our favourite old wooden crate and a bit of packing to keep it up at the right kind of height so that I can get the landing gear back in again, which is a bit fiddly. Pass out. That's one. Yeah, it's no, he's right. There are only two holes there. Next, two bolts, one either side that attaches top of the landing gear to the airframe. Put that in well, this hole, just, well, just to, to even not align it up. So it's done. Next job is to cut out the inspection panels in the seat back. I'm going to cut out some nice big circles with a hole cutter here so that I've got a nice radius curve on the edges and then I'll cut the rest out with a saw. now cut out all the holes where the inspection panels will go in the seat back so it's time to actually fasten the panels on themselves. I'm going to use things called Zeus fasteners. They have a button which is this bit which will go on the inspection panel and be fixed to that and then a spring which will be fixed to the seat back and when the two come together the button slots over the spring, you turn it through quarter of a turn and it locks on and you just turn it with a big slotted screw head on the buttons. So each of the main inspection panels on the seat back has 10 of these Zeus fasteners. Fitting the button to the panel itself, the grommet fits through from the front face, like so, and then put the whole thing on a block, get a special punch, and then give it a couple of neat taps, and then poke the button through from the front side, which is where it'll sit place it back down again and then get another punch that will sit over the button and then a few more whacks. There you go. The button can turn completely freely inside its grommet. So this is how it goes together. Like that. Give it a turn, quarter of a turn. Like that. Solid as a rock. Right. Seat backs in, now I can get on with the rest of the bodywork, starting with a whole load of Clecos. Right, that's the last Cleco for now. I've put 16 Clecos in to attach the tub here to the pod. That's enough. It will have fixings all the way, every two and a half inches, all the way around this edge here eventually but we won't actually drill those until we've got some of the other body panels on so that you have got a bit of flexibility in moving things around so next it's a window with a special name and it relates to eyebrow eyebrow panel please pete thank, thank you up. very much mate there you go now that is going to drop in there there's the master hole so that's going to go there oh that was Easier than I thought. Right, the overhead panel. Helicopter. My word. Look at the wheels on that, eh? Doors. Doors, doors, doors. You need doors on your helicopter for three, one, two, three very important reasons. The first is to keep you nice and warm in inclement weather. The second is to stop your papers blowing around when you're flying at high speed and rolling and banking all over the place. And the third is just in case your safety belts fail, you won't fall out. So they are important, although a lot of people in the States fly without them because obviously they get a breeze and it's very nice. But in this country, we're going to put doors on. The doors come 
in a couple of bits, well, three bits, really. The frame, which is this bit, there's then a piece of plexiglass that you have to fit to this frame and shape it to fit, and then there's all the bits for the hinges to attach it to the aircraft itself. The first job is to make sure 